So it is when we have been damaged and hurt and wounded. We see life through those lens. And so we don't see clear and sufficient in order to reach our purpose and destiny until God comes in and begin to heal our hearts and make us whole. souls we go through things in life some good some seemingly not so good some traumatic sometimes things hurt sometimes has things have a lasting effect on our lives sometimes our souls are cast down sometimes our souls are uh, disquieted full of sorrow fear worries, anxieties, stress. It's all a part of what we go through in life. But it's so comforting to know that there is a lover and a healer for our souls. That we don't have to go through it alone. He will always, as the song said, be there. Look again at Psalms 51, David, of course, had failed God and he had turned aside momentarily and got distracted and fell into sin. And he was there in a certain place when the prophet Nathan came, gave him a parable and gave him an opportunity to pronounce the sentence. And when he did, and then Nathan says, David, you are the man. I can't imagine what took place just momentarily in his heart, wondering what the next step would be, what God was going to do, because he knew the law. And the law pretty much said the soul that sinned must die. So David just didn't know what to do and then but before Nathan left him he said God also has put away your sin unheard of because that brought us into the grace that we know now David wrote something and was to the chief musicians and it says a psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba you can read the full passage on your own time if you will but you can see verse 1 how he starts out in verse 2 have mercy upon me O God according to your loving kindness According to the multitude of the, thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. And he goes on. Such a wonderful prayer of repentance. Recognizing who he had sinned against the holy God and as he began to acknowledge his sin and began to repent before God God of course had it recorded so that we can see that uh, 
Even those after God's own heart, they fail. Isn't that right? There's not a perfect one in the Bible mentioned. Job was one mentioned that he was perfect and upright. But then, and he perhaps endured what I don't know if anybody else could. But he became righteous in his own self. So there's, David said, there's no one that does not sin at all. We're living in a death doomed body. And with all of our strivings, we must depend upon God. Seven, seven things I'm going to give to you briefly as he touched my heart and says, number one, God wants to restore restore us to wholeness. Would you look at your neighbor and say, God want to make you whole. God wants to restore us to wholeness. Every ministry has their particular giftings from God. And I say giftings from God because they don't take it upon themselves to be or to do. It has to come from God, every assignment. So, But uh, for our ministry, God has seen fit to cause us to bring healing and wholeness to humanity, broken lives, and um, we all fall in that category in some way, form, or fashion. Some may be in more than others, but we still all need God because the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God wants to restore us. And I want you to think with me uh, to restore someone is to bring something back to its original beauty, his state. God not only wanted to restore the earth that fallen, had fallen through Adam's sin, uh, Satan gained the upper hand and began to take humanity through some very deplorable conditions and situations. That's the way he is. But thank God he had a plan not to leave us there. Isn't that good? And it's the time of restoration. And from the time that Jesus came and died upon the cross and rose again and went back to heaven and took his blood upon the altar as a sacrifice for an atonement for sin. And then he hallelujah, cried out, of course, after he had died on the cross and said, it is finished. The plan of redemption to bring you and I back in harmony with God. Hallelujah, and that's a good thing. It was Jesus that did this. So that now anybody and everybody can be made whole that will believe in Jesus Christ. It matters not what the condition has been. It doesn't matter how deep and devastating the trauma has been, but there is a God in heaven, the creator of the entire universe that can do all things but fail. And I'm so glad that we're connected, somebody say connected, to the God of the whole earth. God wants to restore us to wholeness. You know, we, 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 um, as we're here meditating, think in terms of what you need from God today. It may be healing from fears. It could be healing from uh, oppressions. It could be healing from curses that seem to follow your life. It could be healing from abuse. But whatever it is, think with me now. God says to us, I want to restore you and make you whole. I want you to experience what wholeness is like. You have experienced what uh, um, brokenheartedness is in being fractured and damaged, but now I want you to experience what wholeness is like. I want you to experience a heart that's been mended and put together and to see the joy and the peace and the contentment that follows. Isn't that all right? 
though. That's the first thing he said. I want to restore to wholeness. One more time, look at someone and say, wholeness. The second thing God said is, it is, wholeness is critical to our walking in purpose and fulfilling our destiny. Healing, wholeness is critical to our walking in purpose and fulfilling our destinies. Healing is important. Someone says, well, I don't know why that's so important. I see a lot of people not even saved and they do a lot of things that sometimes even Christians can't do. That is true. But who's to say God accepts it? Isn't that right? God, it's not, not necessary that uh, true that God accepts every good thing that his people are doing because the Lord said, many will stand before me in that day and say, Lord, haven't we not prophesied in your name and done many wonderful works? And then God says, uh, I will profess to them, I never knew you. So every work that is good will not be accepted by God. Isn't that right? But uh, let me go to the point number two. He said, Healing is critical to our walking in purpose and fulfilling the destiny. Now look at Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 4. It is written, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach or proclaim good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty, somebody say beauty, for ashes, the oil of joy, somebody say joy, for mourning, the garment of praise, somebody say praise, for the spirit of heaviness. And listen to this phrase, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Healing is critical to our fulfilling and walking in purpose and destiny. Just one more time, if you will look at someone and says, uh, and it's critical for you too. I'll never forget when God came to me many years ago and he said, I'm going to heal you and I'm going to bless you. It seemed that he was saying what I want to do to bless you is predicated upon you allowing me to heal you. And so God met me one day and began to heal me of childhood hurts, took me back. And as he was allowing it to come to surface, I felt my heart in pain from rejection. So being a pastor, I didn't know what to think about it. No one had taught me about it. Then while I was thinking about it, what is this and where is this coming from? He said, I speak healing to your spirit. Oh, what a relief that was. Oh, what a relief that was. And then connected to all of my shyness, my sense of uh, fear. I, I didn't know it at the time, but all, all uh, that was connected to, I, I lacked strength. I lacked uh, boldness. I lacked courage. And it was all coming from this hurt 
these childhood hurts that I passed through and to my utter amazement when God healed me I was able to stand up in strength but prior to that there was a lady from Marilyn Hickey's ministry that came we were my wife late wife Betty was we were sitting at a table with her this was before I got healed I was in the pastorate and then she looked at me and she said to my wife God has a word for your husband. And during that time, I wasn't big on people giving me words if I didn't know them. So, but at least I tried to be respectful and uh, she gave me the word, but I had no idea how mighty that word was. And she says, God's going to heal you from some childhood hurts. And she linked being able to walk in authority with the healing of the childhood hurts. I knew there was a problem there, but I didn't know what to do about it. So there was the healing that came forth and the boldness and the confidence came up from God as a result of, you have to hear me today, God healing me from these fears and childhood hurts. You that are listening to me by way of television, God wants to make you whole. You've been asking God about certain fears. You've been asking God about why you can't stand up and why you are not bold enough. And God has given you the answer today and saying, uh, I want to go back and visit some of those traumas that you've passed through. And I want to take out of you the fears and heal up that heart so that you could understand and begin to walk into purpose. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So healing is critical to our walking in purpose. The third thing that he mentioned is today, some are going to get healed from abuse. Ladies, let me share with you verbatim what God said to me just a few days ago, and I was not even praying about this. And he said, so many women need healing from their abuse. I didn't know why he chose to give that to me. But he said, so many women need healing from their abuse. So you may be here today and saying, well, maybe that's what God has been trying to get me to see. Why? Let me say this. Now, men, that doesn't slight you. I mean, that, I'm just sharing with you what God said, all right? <laughs> but um, when a person is not whole, they see through lens that are colored. If I put on tinted shades, if, it, if it's blue, if the lens are blue, then the hole that I look at and see through has a tint of blue. Am I right? If the lens are orange, then it has an orange tint, right? So it is when we have been damaged and hurt and wounded. We see life through those lens. And so we don't see clear and sufficient in order to reach our purpose and destiny until God comes in and begins to heal our hearts and make us whole. The Bible says unto the pure all things are pure. Blessed are the pure in heart. So God wants to purify and heal our hearts from those things that hurt us and wounded us he's not charging us with it but he's saying you've come to the place that I want to heal you and make life better for you isn't that a good savior God is good the fourth thing that he said is it's time for restoration it's time for restoration uh, needless to say, once I got healed, things started happening 
with me and for me that I had prayed for so many years that I tried to make happen, but it just wouldn't happen. And he began to share with me, I wanted you to see spirits that will hold, keep you from your destiny. But after he began to heal me, he removed them so that I could begin to go forward. It is so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope this will help people to understand the importance of being healed. Because sometimes people feel like you're just fishing for stuff in the past. Not understanding what God wants to do. He's the lover of our soul. Hallelujah, isn't that right? He's a great savior. He loves us so much until he wants to mend us, the broken places in our lives so that we can be all that he wants us to be. So number four, he said, restoration. It's time for restoration. As we came into spiritual blessings and material blessings, it was so amazing just to see how God works. I've discovered that there were certain negative attitudes that came with a lack of being healed that I had. And as God began to better purify my heart, my attitudes began to slowly change. Isn't that amazing? But I didn't know that until he started to heal in me. I started seeing a little bit clearer. The more healing I got, the clearer I began to see life and other people. Are you hearing me? And God is so good. He is so wonderful. And when you see him heal you and the effects of it, you can't help but give him glory. You can't help but give him the honor because he says, oh, I, I didn't understand it, but he was trying to do me good all the time. He's a good savior. I was a bit critical until I understood that I lived a little bit with ridicule. So I learned to be critical. Better understanding that that wasn't the way of life. That was my reality, but it wasn't the way of life. There was good things and good people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the world today, just like there were bad people. But I had an attitude that began to paint most people in a category. So it hindered me more than I wanted to expect. But thanks be to God. He doesn't leave us there. Would you look at somebody and say, he won't leave you there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I was 10. God told me years ago when I was, he was taking me through the fire, he was just purging me from some things that he couldn't use. Anybody ever been through that? Doesn't matter how much we were praying, there was things that he couldn't use. So he put us on the potter's wheel. And look at somebody and say, and you're not getting off until you're done. <laughs> uh, no, matter, no matter how hard I tried, no matter how I cried, oh, I cried, I was saying, I wonder if my tears are pure enough. Uh, everything that I tried, it's like God says, you'll understand it better, son, by and by. But my God, am I happy that he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. David looked, and after Nathan shared with him what happened, David knew he had to go through some things. But David cried unto the Lord. He says, create in me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And renew a right spirit in me took the man's wife he had a wrong spirit isn't that right so he said he said renewing me a right spirit restoring to me the joy of your salvation uh, can I say something about that sometimes 
situation and circumstances will zap your joy. David says, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And you know when you got joy, it's contagious, isn't that right? <laughs> you go on your job and that people say, I wonder why that person is so happy. They said, oh, if you knew what I knew, if you'd been where I'd been, if you'd seen what God had done, so you can't contain it. It's, joy is something that, that it just overflows and makes people want to find out why you're happy. And you see, God want to do this for living word. He, God want to do this to you. He wants your joy to be and to be full, um, to overflow. He wants you to find joy in him. Isn't that right? Um, and some people don't like God too well. But let me say, you, God says he wants your joy to be full. Um, my people shall be satisfied with my goodness. That's what the Lord said. Isn't that right? Look at somebody say, he's good. good. And I'm going to give him a praise. I found out. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. So it's a time for restoration. And he wants to restore. You've carried that long enough. Are you with me? God says you carried that long enough. Now give it up and let me make you joyful in the midst. You remember old uh, 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 Joseph and you remember how uh, Daniel and David and all those, those people there, those testimonies are there for a purpose. For well, God is with us. So that was number four. God says it's a time of restoration. Number five. He said, God is for us. God is for you and I. Think with me. You are not alone. I am not alone. God is for me. God is with you. And you know, when you go through things and it seems like you're in it alone, you're not alone. God is with you. That makes all the difference in the world because if God be for you who can be against you isn't that right so God says to tell them I am for you God is for you so we must embrace this thought no matter what's going on in my life God is for me (laughs) 